Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. This is going to be session three of five, and I am here with Luz Martinez, and we are going to be, uh, well, she's going to be doing a session, not we, she's going to be doing a session on uh, mindfulness basics, and I am excited for this. You know, Luz Martinez has over uh, 11 years of experience working as a dispatcher and still very much in love with the job alongside her experience in the dispatch center. She is also a yoga mindfulness and meditation teacher with over 600 hours of formal teacher training in these practices this is uh, or she is deeply invested in advocating wellness for dispatchers and resides in los angeles county california you can find her on instagram facebook at uh, dispatch wellness and through dispatchwellness.com and we'll make sure to throw that in the comments as well additionally she loves chips and guac so do i, I. Do. <laughs> and this is the simplicity of pre-COVID-19 life and has been embracing her curly hair since she cannot go out <laughs> and get a blowout. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I am excited for this and have at it. It's all you. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you in the first place for doing this and for everyone who's watching live on replay, welcome. And thank you for being here. My gardener just started, of course, because that's life and you might hear them. That might be part of the presentation. When I was thinking of where I'd set up for this presentation, I thought, what if I go to my mother's house and go do my presentation there? And why am I telling you this? Because then I remembered that I practice mindfulness and yeah, I practice mindfulness and do these things like the ones we'll do today to show up in my life in the way my life is now today, being a dispatcher or maybe thinking of being a dispatcher or whatever job you do, we practice mindfulness to show up in our lives however they are. And my life happens to include thin walls and a lot of gardening activity. So I welcome you to that as it is. A little bit more about me. I am embracing my curls because I got bangs this year because I decided I was gonna treat myself to a ton of blowouts um, for my birthday, but that didn't go as planned. And again, that's just how life is. We can make a plan and then we get curveballs. Even obviously, this is a very silly curveball that I'm mentioning, but the point is that we will get curveballs in our career, in our lives, and mindfulness could really help us embrace those curves and really show up. So let's dive right in with breath. Take a deep breath and settle down wherever you are. If you're tuning in from work, this might not be accessible to you, but you can always practice with us later on replay. If you're somewhere where it's safe to do so, find a comfortable position, either sitting down, I'm sitting on a chair cross-legged, or standing up. You can do it either way. And we're going to be tuning into our breath. Our breath is a big part of mindfulness because it's a great anchor. A, we're always breathing. B, our breath can come with us. And C, we can learn exercises to regulate our breath and be a little more calm, a little more present in our lives. So find a comfortable position wherever you are. Settle in. And I invite you to bring one hand to your chest and one hand to your belly. I have one hand on my belly, you cannot see it, but I do. And just for one minute, I'll be keeping time, don't worry. I'll be our timekeeper. For one minute, just feel your breath. Just notice without judgment, if your chest is rising more than your belly. And obviously we take the breath in through our nose and it comes down into our chest and into our belly. So I'm not saying simultaneously, but just explore what is the course of your breath. And in this course, does your chest rise more than your belly or does your belly rise more than your chest? Some of us are chest breathers. I would dare to say most dispatchers are chest breathers because we're quick, we're efficient, and we're dealing with high stress activities all day. 
The thing with chest breathing is it could encourage us to have our shoulders up into our ears. So if that's our case, I invite you to come and bring those shoulders down. And now bring your shoulder blades together and bring those shoulders down a little bit more. And now that you're aware of this, Aware that what we're looking for is evenness in our breath, balanced breathing. We'll do an exercise called square breathing. I would suggest you leave your hands here on your chest and belly, but you don't have to. This is an invitation, a suggestion. Square breathing is used by the military. They call it tactical breathing though, of course, because everything's tactical with them doesn't matter what you call it, just that the practice encourages balanced oxygen levels in our blood, which can be off when we're in stressful situations. We're all in a stressful situation with what we're going through in this moment in life. Plus, we all dispatchers and emergency services show up to stressful jobs. So we'll start with square breathing. By inhaling for four seconds, holding the breath for four seconds, exhaling for four seconds, and holding on empty for four seconds. You don't have to remember that, I'll guide you. So let's begin. Inhale, hold the breath, exhale, Hold on empty. Inhale. Hold the breath. Exhale. 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 Hold on empty. We'll do this three more times. Inhale. Hold the breath. Exhale. Hold on empty. Inhale. Hold the breath. Exhale. Hold on empty. 
once more. Inhale. Inhale some more, just once more. Inhale a little more through a straw. Hold the breath. Exhale. That might be a big one. Exhale some more. Really empty your lungs. Hold on empty. And return to your normal breathing. Observe your normal breathing now though. Is it different than when you began? And this is just a question for you to explore on your own. No need to come to chat. Just notice if your breath is different after this square breathing exercise and after giving your breath some loving care and attention. Mine is way more regulated. So thank you so much for practicing with me. And you now have two tools to take with you anywhere you go, which are observing your breath and maybe giving some mindfulness to having balanced breath and also square breathing. So thank you so much for practicing that with me. As Ricardo said, I've been dispatching for 11 years, but a little bit of why I got into mindfulness was I started in records. So I've been in law enforcement for over 13 years. Sorry, I just moved my foot. I started in records and I remember walking by dis the dispatch center. It was a tiny, tiny dispatch center where I worked, where I started, it was a small agency and their dispatch center was literally a closet. So they're in a way more beautiful center now, which I'm glad, glad of. And I'm no longer at that agency. I've moved to a larger agency, but that's not the point of the story. The point of the story was that I would walk by this small center at that time, the size of a closet and to the kitchen to get coffee, which happens all the time. I drink massive amounts of coffee. So I'd walk by dispatch a lot. And I remember feeling energy coming from the dispatch center, like a real buzz. We call it a buzz, the buzzing, especially when they were working high, high stress incidents, high stakes incidents. I, I was really drawn in by that. So after two years in records, I transferred into dispatch and I learned what that buzzing was about. It's about deep, meaningful work with high stakes and high intensity. So let's think about that. It's deep and meaningful. I love it. I love knowing that I can make a difference actively in people's lives, sometimes at their worst moments, but that's a lot. That's a, it's a big thing. So that's the first thing, high intensity, high stakes. And I loved it. I call it my first professional love. I'm still very much in love with dispatching, but around five years after dispatching, when I got really good at my job, at least I thought I was really good at my job. That's very biased. Um, I got good feedback too, though, too, to be fair. Um, when I got really good at my job, my job was great. I loved showing up. I loved active incidents. I loved all of it, but going home was more difficult for me. That's how it showed up for me. And that's I'm telling you this, this is how I got into mindfulness was going home. My kids at that time were probably like three and four. They're 18 months apart. So they were a lot in themselves, <laughs> but they were also perfect and precious. These are ages where they can't really do. They're not teen. They weren't teenagers like they are now. They, they didn't really do anything that was upsetting. And yet I found my patience very short with them and not outwardly, not towards them. I try to be a loving mother because those are my kids. But internally, I felt such sense of irritation when anything was asked of me. Because what you will learn if you dispatch 
is that you will deal with emergencies all day long at work, but that doesn't mean that emergencies stop outside of work. That doesn't mean that you get to go home and people don't need anything from you because you just gave for 10, 12, 15 hours, however long you were at work. And not this is not to discourage anyone, but it is an observation. It's the truth. We give at work all day long. That's our job and we love it, but we are gonna have to leave the center and also continue giving to our children, our families, whatever our families look like. You don't have to have children to have exter external responsibilities. So that's how it showed up for me. It was, I was getting burned out at year five, even though I loved the career and it wasn't showing up at work. At work, I was doing well, but it was showing up in my patience, in my internal capacity to hold space for the people I loved. And so I realized that and I came to mindfulness through yoga. I found yoga and I, through the movement of yoga, the stretching and the breathing, I didn't realize it then, but that's what, what I was so attracted to was because we're sedentary all day and we're not really mindful of our breath. If we don't have this awareness, then yoga was giving me those things. Yoga was giving me the stretching and the breathing. And so I came, became a little addicted to, to yoga because it made me feel so good. And ever since I found it, I've been practicing consistently and it led to mindfulness and meditation. I found these things because I started yoga and here I am now talking to you guys about mindfulness, yoga and meditation, which I can do for days and days and days. So that's how I arrived at mindfulness by understanding that I was in need of space and that I was struggling with certain aspects of my life. And there's no shame in that, we're human. We do superhero jobs, we do. Um, so I know you guys know that because there's a huge advocate, 911 Wonder Woman. I love that tagline because, and men, 911 <laughs> Wonder Woman and men. We do superhero jobs, but we are human. So I think remembering that and having some grace with ourselves when we're feeling a little rundown or a little burned out, um, taking that as awareness when you, maybe if you're saying like, oh my God, I'm so whatever you are, right? Um, irritable or crabby or maybe, yes, say it out loud because there's no shame, but also be like, oh, and this means that I'm, my, I might need to replenish myself. I might need to take a minute for me, I need to nourish. Let's see, what do I need? And so hopefully through these tools that we'll be talking about today, we'll be able to ask those questions to ourselves and, and do some great work. So enough about that. Let's see, I get really passionate about things. So I have notes here, because if not, I get sidetracked. And that's how I got there. I think how we all got here, there's 1,500 people, 1,597 people, it says, which is, wow, mind blowing. I think how we got there is because now we know better, right? Um, there's research showing that our job is high stress, that it has consequences, repetitive use, injury, PTSD. These are all real things. Now we know these things, we talk about them. And one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. Know better, do better. Now we know. So we're doing better. We're talking about it. And this is huge in our industry. I think that's, that's part of the reason we're here. Also, you, if you've been feeling a little run down, a little with less capacity of patience, or however it shows up for you, that's just how it shows up for me. And it still keeps showing up. It hasn't gone away. Um, I know when I'm a little more quick to react, it's because there's something going on. So I think taking a moment right now and just maybe think, starting to ask yourself, how does it show up for you? And I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. If you have a journal, that would be great. I'm going to ask you to have a journal later. So if you don't have a journal, if you could make one accessible to yourself, 
a journal and a pen, that would be amazing. And maybe just ask yourself, how does this show up for me when I'm getting a little burned out, when my cup is full? So I'll let you sit with that question that no one else can answer but you. So take that question with you. That's another tool that you now have to, back, to ask yourself, how does when I'm feeling a little worn down or a little spent, how does that feel for me? How does it show up? There's no right or wrong answer and there might not be just one answer. There might be many. And you don't have to share it with the world. It's yours to have. And if you ever feel like sharing it, better when you're ready, because sharing it with each other really helps us be in community, but only when you're ready. It took me years to be ready to share what I just shared with you. So taking the time and the respect to your inner feelings to share them when you're ready and not before that. So whatever you wrote down or thought of, you're, there's nothing, it's normal. There's a stress response built into us and we are wired for fight or flight. That's our stress response. So we'll think of that for another minute. Flight or fight is our natural reaction, how we're wired to deal with stress. We walk into the center and there's all this stress coming at us from different directions. And we thrive, we're trained professionals, we do a great job, I am not questioning that. That's not the topic here, that's not what I'm questioning. I trust that if you're at your agency, you made training, you're doing your job. That's, that's not the topic. The topic is that stress comes at you from every direction and we're wired for fight or flight and we cannot fight. We, can you think of that? Like We can't fight our callers, we're there to help them. And we cannot flee. We cannot. Can you imagine if we leave the room running because that's our natural? I mean, I, I could tell you it's probably it's ingrained in you, right? That's how we're wired. That's our predisposition. But we cannot fight and then we cannot flee. So we have to sit there with the stress. Just sit there and do nothing is kind of what I did for five years. Is to sit with it and that adds up. That will definitely burn us out. And burnout is not incurable. I did a lot of reading on burnout. And if you're burned out, you don't have to be burned out forever. You really don't. Um, so I'm letting you know, because I was feeling run down and really burned out. And I go through ebbs and flows. Sometimes I feel that way again. And I'm, it's just information. It's like, oh, what do I need to be doing to better take care of myself? And for me, it's always about my mindfulness and my meditation and my yoga. but. You will find tools, hopefully, here or after this conversation that are, that are good for you to manage those ebbs and flows. So some of the tools that I wanted to talk to you about today was breath or mindfulness practice, mindful movement, and mindfulness and nutrition. Those are the topics that I'll be talking about. What is mindfulness, though? What is it really? And mindfulness is described as being aware of the present moment without judgment. And that's a lot to say to a group of people that have to be using their judgment all day long. We use our judgment every single time we answer the phone, every single time we make a choice. That's fantastic. But let's not be judgmental with ourselves. So it's turning off that judgment towards ourselves and others in, in our day-to-day -day life. 
I'm not saying don't use your judgment for your dog. You still very much need to do that. But judge, judgment towards ourselves, self-criticism is not helpful. So mindfulness is being aware of the moment without judgment. So just pay attention to wherever you are and describe it. I'm in my home. There's gardeners outside. There's a cup of coffee here, which I'm going to have a sip of. There is the weather. It's nice. I'm with all of you. And now I don't need to judge that. That's just what it is. I don't need to add stressors to it. It's not good or bad. It just, it is what it is. That's mindfulness. That doesn't mean we don't try to change it. If we're in a situation we need to leave, no, but we observe it and we gain clarity by ob observing wherever we're at. So that's mindfulness, being aware of the present moment without judgment, without having to always be labeling it, this is good or this is bad. Benefits include, and this is scientifically proven, positive changes to the brain, stress responses, decrease in emotional reactivity, better ability to participate in the present moment, better ability to participate in the present moment. Our jobs are all about the ability to participate in the present moment. So if you want to focus in on that, that way, work, that's great. This is a great tool for all managers, for all supervisors to give to your employees or just for yourself that you're here doing this for yourself better ability to participate in the present moment. And for me also, better ability to participate in the present moment with those people that I love. So that's my favorite. <laughs> I emphasize that one, Seth. That's my favorite benefit of mindfulness. Simple tools for mindfulness include breathing. We did a breathing exercise. That is a tool for mindfulness and a body scan mindfulness practice. So we'll be doing the body scan now. And this is an invitation to do it with me. You are not obligated, but I hope you join us. So again, settle in a comfortable position, whatever that position is. You could be standing, you could be sitting down, you could be laying down if you're at home on a flat surface, if that feels good do it. Whatever your position is, settle into it by, again, bringing awareness to wherever you're at. And if during this process you decide you need to move, it's okay. You can do that. But do it mindfully by observing the need to move and then deciding you're going to move and then moving slowly. That's all I ask. If you need to move, move. Do it slowly, intentionally. So we begin our body scan by being in a comfortable position and tuning into our breath. Now we bring all our attention, all our awareness to our toes. Wiggle your toes. Know they're there and give them all your attention and just notice are they cold? Are they hot? Is there any sensation there? Just notice that without any judgment or any label, just observation. Bring that awareness into the tops of your feet, your heels, your arches. If you get distracted at any time, Use that opportunity to come back to awareness, to rejoin us in this exercise. It's not bad or good. It's going to happen. We're going to get distracted all the time. But we use those opportunities to come back to whatever we're doing. Bring all your awareness up your shins. Feel every little bone in your shin. Your calves, your calf muscles up into your knees. Feel your knees. Is there any sensation there? Just observe it. Maybe direct your breath towards your knees. If you're feeling achy or sore. 
Bring that awareness into your thighs, tops of your thighs, bottom of your thighs, into your pelvis, into your sits bones, maybe noticing that you are tilting forward or back. Bringing that awareness into your belly. Resting here on your belly for a minute. Bringing that awareness into your chest, your collarbones, spreading through your collarbones, rolling your shoulders back softly. Taking a deep breath and letting it go. Bring that awareness into your arms, your elbows, your hands. Let that feel really heavy. Your hands are heavy. Feel the tops of your hands, every finger, your fingernails. Bring that awareness back up your fingers into your wrists, back up into your elbows, up into your shoulders up your neck. Now imagine you have a line of energy and you're, someone's pulling you up lovingly. You gain a little bit of length in your spine. Bring that energy up your neck, up into your chin, your cheeks. Release your jaw. Open your lips. No one is seeing you, but you can see me. Move your jaw around. Release any tension there. And this is another practice you can do. Release tension in our jaw. We grip a lot here. Bring that awareness up your nose and to your eyes. Maybe close your eyes and roll your eyeballs around your eye sockets. Relax around your eyebrows, your laugh lines, your forehead your hair. And now, if you had your eyes closed at any point, you could open them. And join us back. It's a body scan. I love them. They're my favorite. Anything I ever do, I do a body scan. And these are really beneficial if you just want to ground, if you have a 15 minute break, you just want to focus on presence. This is good. And if you are having difficulty sleeping, you could do this in bed with the intention of falling asleep. And many times if I do this, I'll fall asleep with that intention. I'll fall asleep before I get to my waist and sometimes sooner. So it's a really good tool to have for sleep regulation and also for, for grounding. So, and what does grounding mean, right? It's one of those foo-foo words, but for being in the present moment, for being right there where you are at. So let's see how I'm doing on time. I think I'm okay. Does anyone have questions about mindfulness or what we've talked about? I am happy to take those um, and I'll give it a minute so you guys could type it if you have it. You don't need to have any, but if you do, I'm open and available to read them now. Another thing for a mindfulness practice, a tool that really helps me is an app called 10% Happier. It's a paid subscription, although right now, although they give you a free month, A, that's my first Aldo. And my second Aldo is for coronavirus. They have this section specifically for the pandemic that's free to all. So they're not paying me. They don't know I exist, but I've been their customer for years and years and I love them. I cannot recommend them enough for mindfulness, for meditation. Or talks. They have world experts on there and they're just really lovely. They're a great resource. But it's 10% happier. So it doesn't look like anyone has questions that I can see. So we'll continue. Let's see. And I'm sorry. Um, I'm switching back. I don't see your comments while I'm talking because, you know, I get distracted. So mindful movement is the second thing I wanted to talk to you about. And we'll just touch on this, just part of the conversation. 
Mindful movement are general, gentle exercises that we do mindfully. So again, mindfully is being aware of the present moment, doing intentionally, slowly. They help with aches and pains. They're good to have because we sit for so long, we're sedentary for so long, um, that it's good to balance that out with some movement that's loving. And some of the tools that I could offer you through this presentation, they're not all encompassing, but they're great ones that I love that are very simple, are a chin to chest stretch and also a side to side stretch to kind of let go of tension on the sides of our neck. So we'll be doing that next. Again, come into a position where you feel comfortable. Hmm. To settle down. And we'll be bringing our chin to our chest. So inhale and bring your chin to your chest gently. You are the expert of your body. So if this does not feel right for you, do not do it. If only going halfway feels good to you, do that. Honor wherever you are at. You return back to your breath here. Just hold your chin to your chest. Now inhale, bring your chin up slowly, so, so slowly. And we'll do several rounds of this. Inhale here, exhale. Now on the exhale, we come chin to chest. Inhale, and on your exhale, lift your chin from your chest. So just playing around with the breath, exploring. Inhale, on your next exhale, bring your chin to your chest. And you might notice that you have a little more mobility just after a couple of times of doing it. On your next inhale, lift the chin from the chest so, so slowly. So, 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 so slowly, very slowly. Inhale, and on your next exhale again, chin to chest. Inhale, lift your chin. And we'll move to move our head side to side. So inhale, and then move your head to the right. This is as far as my ear is going today, and I respect that, but I still feel that gentle stretch in these muscles here. Just honor yourself wherever you're at. Inhale, bring your Head back up, exhale, turn to the other side. And there's always one side that's tighter than the other. This was obviously the side for me. Inhale, slowly bring your head up, exhale. Move to the other side. Inhale. 
Inhale, bring your head up. Exhale, come to the other side. Inhale, bring your head up. So you could always do that at work, between calls, transmissions. Now, also what is helpful is if you bring your arms in front of you and then cross one arm under the other like this. Cross one arm under the other and then give yourself a hug of your shoulders. This is a very variation of eagle arms. In yogic Sanskrit, that's Garudasana arms. This is a variation of that. Once you have your hands here, you bring your shoulders down gently. Bring your shoulder blades together and imagine they're coming down on your back gently until it feels there's a light stretch. No pain, no pinching, burning. And if this is not accessible to you, you could grab your shoulders. Sorry, these are not your shoulders, your elbows. Now switch the cross of your arms. Switch the cross of your arms. And again, hug yourself, putting your hands on your shoulders and pulling down gently. This is not accessible to you. I'll say it right this time. You could put your hands on your elbows and then this will require a little more awareness because there's less hand involvement. You bring those shoulders down. You could release the cross. Sorry, I just did my own thing. You could release the cross and come back to a comfortable position. Gentle yoga is a great resource to us and this is not a plug-in. I trained with Yoga Works, which I believe to be a leader in the yoga industry. And I did a bunch of training with them, but they have a great online platform. You don't have to train with them. And they don't know I'm saying this at the moment and I don't get any commission, but I use myyogaworks.com all the time because most of their studios are not close to my home, but I trust their teachers. And I spend a lot of time on myyogaworks.com, www.myyogaworks.com. So, and I believe they're offering free online yoga during the pandemic if you use code online. They started doing that when the pandemic started. So I don't know if that's still available, but if not, it's, they also give a free trial and I consider them to be worth the investment. So I don't get a commission at all but it's a tool I've used for years. So I wanted to share that with you. And lastly, mindfulness in our nutrition is something I just wanted to touch on. It's just things to think of, right? That could help us. Actual mindfulness, which I believe is the biggest, most important, most nourishing to us at the moment, but that's not to discount mindful movement and mindfulness and nutrition and mindfulness just in all areas of our life. But mindfulness and nutrition just is that. It's as simple as that, is being aware of what we're consuming because there's stressors of the job that come with the job and there's stressors of the job that we ingest voluntarily. And I'm guilty as charged, right? I indulge also but just knowing that these indulgences also cause stress to our body our body also recognizes these stress these stressors as that with that just that stress so just being aware of that some of the stressors come with the job and some of the stressors we ingest with our food choices and our nutrition so if we're mindful of our nutrition we could have increased energy we could feel better our body could function better, our immune system could be stronger. And some simple tools I wanted to talk to you about for nutrition are chewing slowly. 
it's the hardest, hardest thing for me because I've never been a slow chewer. My upbringing didn't encourage that. And I've just always chewed really fast. And I came into a profession that that actually seemed to be helpful. Like, wow, I've been practicing for this my whole life, not chewing my food. But it's not a great thing on our digestive system. And chewing slowly can really play a factor in our nutrition. It can make us more aware of what we're eating. If we were in person, I would have brought you guys all raisins. So you can Google, there's a raisin mindfulness exercise that you can practice at home. If not, we'll do it when we meet in person. And I hope that is one day soon. Um, but yeah, just chewing really, really slowly. Pretending you've never seen whatever is in front of you. Like if this is, this is what I'm going to ingest right now, I'll pretend I've never seen coffee before and I'll get curious about it. Hmm. Look at this brown liquid. The almond milk separated. Weird. Looks like it's too, describing that to you. <laughs> Looks like it's two different colors. I'll take in the scent. Then I'll wait. Then I'll take a sip. And I'll slowly take that in mindfully. So if you could do that in your nutrition, there's also chewing, chewing apps. I've not done that. Um, so I just know they exist, so I'm mentioning it. But um, I've not done chewing apps. What I do is just try to slow down. And I try as much as possible. This is not a consistent. I try as much as possible to eat away from my console. I will tell you that that's hard. <laughs> um, that is really hard. So if you can, when you can, don't be hard on yourself. Don't judge, just know it's there. And things that are really helping me with nutrition during these difficult times are, I've subscribed to meal kit services for a long time. And they're the meal prep services, Blue Apron, Green Chef, all that stuff. And if that's affordable to you, I think it's a worthy investment also because it forces you to start getting in the practice of cooking food. So for me, that was important because I was out of the practice and it makes it so simple. But if that's not in your budget, I will tell you what that, that service does. It brings all the ingredients ready. You have every, let's say you're making a rice bowl with beans. Um, you'll have your rice ready, the amount you're cooking and the beans ready. And that way, when you go to cook it, it's easy. So if you could take a day just to plan what you're going to be cooking and get all that stuff together, I think that's really helpful because then you don't have a way out. You know what you're cooking, it's there. So it's less justifiable to go and make other choices. Although again, gentleness, I wanna emphasize gentleness. These are all habits that we're forming along the way. Something that really helps me is when we're done with dinner, I pack my lunch immediately. I used to put the food in big containers when we were done, even if there was not that many leftovers, I'd use the big containers for some reason. And then those leftovers went into the trash. I never use them. And now I immediately, I bought meal prep Tupperware and on Amazon or anywhere that you wanna buy it. And I pack my lunch as soon as dinner's over. That's lunch and it makes it really easy. There's no thinking, I grab the container when I'm ready to go to work, so. That's really helpful. And just having easy foods around, rice bowls with beans. Um, if you eat protein, whatever protein you eat, if you're a carnivore or a vegetarian, having that available. Yeah. And now I said you would need a journal and we've come to that portion of, of this conversation. So have a journal ready, I have mine. This is the last exercise I wanted us to share together. And it's simple and it's not about nutrition. It's just a way to maybe deal. I'm gonna call it that, it's a way to deal. So bring your journal and your pen. If you don't have a journal or a pen, you could always use your notes on your phone because I know a lot of you are watching from devices. Use your device. You don't need a journal or a pen. I like journals and pens, but you don't have to be using that. And I will be our timekeeper. And this is the exercise. What we'll be doing is, and I found this exercise during these times, during these difficult times, 
of COVID-19. I was feeling really overwhelmed one day because the house wasn't clean, as clean as I wanted it. And the kids were acting up because <laughs> they have cabin fever. I can't blame them, but still stressful to me. Um, so all these things, right, I was like really upset. And so I just got a journal and I, I decided I was just going to let it all out. I was going to write why I was pissed off, which is I don't have a magical clean house that cleans itself and the kids don't act like adults, right? I just let it out, no judgment, <laughs> just write it down. And I did that for five minutes. And then for five minutes, I wrote down what I was grateful for. And oddly enough, my house, I have a shelter. That was also on the list. My kids are healthy. That was also on the list. So it, the things might be on the list twice. They might be on your nagging list. And they might be on your gratitude list. And you'll see how things are double. So let's do this. We're going to write down for one minute what's pissing us off or bothering us, making us upset at the moment. Just write it down, no judgment. For one minute, I'll keep time. Now stop, time's over. We can continue later. And again, I do this in five and five minute increments, but for the purposes of this conversation, we're doing it at one and one minutes. Now for one minute, switch gears and bring into mind everything you are grateful for this moment. It could be that cup of coffee that we're here in community. It's so powerful that whatever you're grateful for, the sunshine, whatever it is, you have one minute now, and please write down what you are grateful for this moment right now. And that was one minute. You could finish whatever you're writing and return to your conference. And this is just another tool for you to have. I hope you found something here that helps you. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Info at Dispatch Wellness. I'm on Instagram at Dispatch Wellness on Facebook at Dispatch Wellness. So reach out anytime if I could support you in any way. One of the biggest medicines against, against burnout is community. And I've proven that to be true. So let's form community, let's support each other. And please reach out if I can help you in any which way. Thank you so much for being here. And let me know if you have a question. Oh, hey, man. hey, oh, geez. Thank you so much for doing this. I don't know about all of you who are watching right now, but 
I am all kinds of relaxed and this has been good. I mean, I was writing down the stuff like you were saying and just, you know, gratitude, my health, my family, uh, the 91 community and of this conference and just, it has been excellent. Thank you so much for doing this. There are questions. Uh, awesome. Yay. Um, I, I, Do we have time for to, them? Yes. I did okay, not want cool. to jump in as you were talking. I, when, when you had asked for questions, I was looking to see if there was any questions for the um, what you were doing at that moment, because some okay. of these are um, were not at that moment. But, okay. uh, but either cool. way, we've got Bring several up. here. So, all right, here we go. So these first okay. two are actually, I'm going to... Um, they're both pretty much the same. The two top ones Sweet. upvoted. Sure. And cool. it was, do you have a guided meditation you offer? YouTube, SoundCloud, MP3. Uh, people are saying they need to watch every day what you're doing. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my God. Thank you. You guys were on my gratitude list, by the way, each and every one of you. So thank you, Ricardo, for doing that. That was this event it was on my gratitude list as well. Um, I, I am building more and more of that. I will be working on something for... Skillshare that I'll, I'll be doing in extensive fashion, but I am building all my work at the moment and in that regard to digitalizing it. So I, I host mindfulness and coffee on Mondays. Every dispatcher, every active dispatcher is invited. It's free. It's on Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We do a mindfulness exercise before we begin and we just build community and support each other. So everyone's invited to that. You could find me there. You could find me on Instagram. I have some recordings on my Instagram account. So that's that's where I'm at in regards to that. Perfect. Thank you for that question. It's great and encouraging. Let me, uh, so the next one here is, um, do you have any practices or suggestions for doing a mental reset of focus, like after a bad call or someone mm. having a bad day? Such a good question. So a mental reset after a bad call. So th those were, I'll take it in two questions, bad call and bad day, right? Let's say I have a bad call. I'm getting, and this came with experience. I acknowledge it was hard call because I think sometimes when we're new dispatchers and we just think that we're superheroes because we are, again, um, we might not want to acknowledge that that was really hard. And so just acknowledging like, oh man, wow. That was really hard to hear. That was actually really, really hard to hear. And I'm, wow, I feel it in my chest. Just observation, that mindfulness. Oh, I feel it in my chest. Oh, oh, maybe I need a break. Maybe right now I need to journal every single way that that was really hard for me to hear. And then I could rip it up. I can throw it away. I could keep it, whatever I choose to do with it. I just need to get it out. I need to acknowledge it. Maybe I need to go on, maybe I could take my 15 right now and go on a little break and walk around and get, get movement in there, that flight or fight, some, some of it, some release. Um, maybe I just need to stretch. Oh my God, I'm like the weirdest person to work with. I'm always just doing a forward fold right in front of everyone. So whatever you need, I think just, just, but first it starts with, oh man, shit, that was hard, right? I didn't like that. I didn't like hearing that. I didn't like being part of that, but that's my job and I love my job, but that was still hard. And just observing it and starting from there, I think that's the best place to start. A bad day, what do I do after a bad day? Well, I don't always make the best choices. I, I wish I could tell you every single time I have a bad day, I come and I practice yoga and I journal. But, some, you know, be kind to yourself. If you're having a bad day, check in with yourself. And what do you need? What do you need in that moment? Do you need maybe a walk? Do you need to spend a little more time in your car before you go inside in the house where you have different demands? right? Do you need a guided meditation? Do you need to work out? Um, just exploring, just accepting that you're having a bad day is huge. It's, it's first step. And then noticing what you might need and playing around with it. I don't have a question, an answer that what to do in case of a bad day. It's finding tools that work for you. And but starting with acknowledging that you're having a bad day is great. It's fantastic. Perfect. Uh, the next one here is, do you know of a chair yoga program that teaches some of the yoga poses? So yoga works is the only thing I could vouch for. They have chair yoga on there and whoever you are, if you want to hit me up on Instagram, I could find them too for you. I went to school with a lot of people that are doing yoga at the moment. And I know one of my friends, I just don't want to give you her bad, bad, a bad website. She does chair yoga and, um, yeah. But Yoga Works has chair yoga on there. 
Yeah. Cool. The last question on here looks like it is, um, how do you stay awake when practicing mindfulness or breathing exercises? Practice. <laughs> um, it comes with practice and also moving from a position. Let's say it's in being sitting down, closing your eyes is encouraging sleepiness. Then you could always stand up and you could always do, I didn't mention it here, but there's all kinds of meditation modalities. You could walk mindfully, you could walk slowly. So that encourages activeness. And if you're, for some reason, walking is not accessible to you, you can have a chair in front of you and just being moving your feet, just that little bit of movement encourages wakefulness. And sometimes it's your body telling you you need a nap. So if that's the case, just take a nap. That's okay too. Excellent, thank you again so much that was it looks like that was all the questions here amazing and uh i i think i saw in the comments if i <laughs> if i remember correctly there was someone who had mentioned that they had one of their uh one of their coworkers do the um some what you were doing in the beginning and i think they said that they fell asleep <laughs> that they were but they were that they were that relaxed that it was you know it was a good thing so that's yeah that's pretty and awesome. also we run we run on black asleep as dispatchers. So I think that's a different conversation for a different segment, but sleep is so important. And so sometimes that's, it's just telling us we're tired. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Just everything in the comments, if you get a chance to come back and look at the replay and just see the comments, everyone, it, it was just an honor to have you on and, and to an be able to, to do here. this and uh, just, you know, put out these, mindful basics mindfulness basics yeah. just like you like you were doing i was i was doing it myself while you were doing it i was like oh man this I'm is glad. good <laughs> i'm glad you're doing it because yes. you've been working really hard so it was excellent i definitely needed it so again thank you so much and for those who are watching right now we are going to be going into uh session four of five and that is going to be with joe mccarville and that is going to be at 2 45 p.m eastern time and once I end this broadcast, the replay will go in and I will be bringing you back uh, over to the next session. So again, Luce, thank you very much. And I will thank see you all for you being in the next one. Thank you, Ricardo. Have Bye, everyone. Day. You too. Everyone have a good day.